Welcome to Lesson 10a, Introduction to Differential Analysis. In this lesson, we'll discuss and review the three main techniques to solve fluid flow problems. We'll discuss flow domains and boundary conditions, and we'll explain the step-by-step -step procedure for differential analysis of fluid flows. There are three main techniques for solving fluid flow problems. We've already discussed the first two, control volume analysis and dimensional analysis with experiment. In a control volume analysis, we set up our control volume, the boundary of which is called the control surface, and we look at quantities that affect the control volume, such as the sum of all forces, mass flow rates in and out, rate of heat transfer into or out of the control volume, and power supplied to or delivered by the control volume. We solve integral or control volume equations. We calculate gross or overall properties, for example, total force, total power out, total heat transfer, etc. In a control volume analysis, we don't care about details inside the control volume. In fact, we treat the control volume as a black box, where we don't really need to know what's going on inside the control volume. Rather, we care about what's going on at these boundaries. In dimensional analysis, combined with experiment, we don't try to solve the equations at all. We simply use dimensions, and we form non-dimensional parameters. This helps us design good experiments and to get some relationships between the non-dimensional parameters called pi's. Then we do some experiments, perhaps in a wind tunnel or water tunnel, to measure the flow properties of interest. The third technique is differential analysis. We set up a domain, which is like a control volume, but it's the region where we want to solve the flow field. We solve differential rather than integral equations. Similar to a control volume analysis, we have to specify boundary conditions along the domain boundary. Then we solve the equations and the boundary conditions, either analytically for simple problems or using a computer where we model the flow. The technique is called computational fluid dynamics, or CFD. And unlike a control volume analysis, we do generate details inside the domain. Details such as velocity field everywhere in the domain, pressure field, etc. Let's discuss the flow domains and the boundary conditions. As I said, a flow domain is kind of like a control volume where you specify boundary conditions such as inlets, velocity, pressure, temperature, etc. And generally we have some kind of an object that we're analyzing and we can generate details like streamlines that flow around this object. In this case, I drew a wing. We solve for pressures and viscous forces all around this wing body. We can integrate over that and calculate a lift force and a drag force, for example. We can specify pressure at every point in the flow, and at each point in the flow, we can solve for the velocity field. This solution can be steady or unsteady, and you may have flow coming out or coming into the flow domain, depending on where you're at and these can be calculated all around. As I mentioned, there are two ways to solve the differential equations. One analytically, in other words, with pencil and paper. This is limited to simple problems, such as fully developed pipe flow, or computationally, with computational fluid dynamics. Theoretically, there's no limit for the complexity of flows that you can solve with CFD. Practically, however, we do run into limits based on computer speed, memory, and other limitations of a computer analysis. In this course, I'll show you some analytical solutions, and we'll briefly introduce CFD. Now, let's talk about the procedure for differential analysis. The procedure itself is nearly the same for analytical or CFD solutions, and I'll show you a step-by-step -step procedure. Step 1, identify the flow geometry and the flow domain. Step 2, list assumptions and approximations. From now on, I'll abbreviate that A and A, and boundary conditions, which I'll abbreviate BCs. Step three, list all appropriate differential equations and the unknowns in the problem. To generate a solution, you must have the same number of equations as unknowns. For example, for 3D incompressible flow without significant temperature changes, we can list the unknowns and the equations. In Cartesian coordinates, the unknowns are u, v, and w, the velocity components, and the pressure. The equations are conservation of mass and the linear momentum equation. 
we add these up, there's four unknowns, and we add these up, and we have four equations. It looks like two equations, but the momentum equation is a vector equation, which is actually three equations, whereas conservation of mass is one equation, a scalar. If we have four unknowns and four equations with appropriate boundary conditions, we should be able to solve this problem. We can add temperature and an energy equation if temperature effects are important, and that usually requires density and an equation of state as well. Then you'd end up with six equations and six unknowns. Step four is to solve the equations. You solve the differential equations, which involves some sort of integration. Step five is to apply the boundary conditions. For these two steps are often done simultaneously when you're using CFD to solve these equations. Steps four and five are actually switched. In other words, we apply boundary conditions and then solve the equations. Step six is to verify the results, specifically that these results satisfy the equations and the boundary conditions. And step seven is to calculate other quantities of interest, such as lift, drag, pressure drop through a pipe, etc. In the next lesson, we'll look at the differential equation for conservation of mass. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.